Okay, we're going to go on a walking tour of the car. We're going to start with the engine compartment. This is the engine compartment. This is the engine. It's an LS1. It's uh, out of a 2002 Corvette. Um, it does not have a water pump. It has Renegade block offs. Those go to the uh, F pipe you can see right here. That Siamese is these two leads together. And then that feeds the water towards the front of the car. Water comes back from the, from the front of the car on this side here. Feeds into a Mazir electric water pump. Two outputs. Both outputs go into the bottom of these block offs. One there, one here. Uh, this Siamese that you see here, this where this comes in. Uh, that's the fill from the fill tank. Fill tank goes to a, uh, uh, a shortened Mishimoto uh, overflow tank. Uh, this is also this is from the steam tubes in the back of the back of the motor. Uh, steam tubes are blocked off in the front, um, but the ones in the back are live. Um, this is a truck rail. Truck rail has uh, a return. As a feed and a return, uh, there is an oil pressure, a fuel pressure gauge on top of that. Uh, I've left some of the markings on. Um, I will probably clean that up before I actually deliver the car. Uh, it has Wevo motor mounts. This is the uh, fuel pump relay. This is the water pump relay. Fuel pump relay feeds all the way to the front of the car. Um, the, uh, the car has um, JBA shorty headers off of a, for a Silverado. Uh, all they do is they, they turn right there. They come down to these MagnaFlow mufflers. It comes back out and uh, underneath the car. It makes a 90 degree turn on either side. Uh, it goes through the, uh, the, the U-bends that are joined in the middle to make a cross flow. And they come out uh, both sides. Uh, the tips here are on um, let me find it sorry the tips here are on uh, v-band clamps uh, all of the hoses are uh, um, Russell Pro Classic 2 with uh, Russell crimped ends no, those, those are crimped uh, all the AN fittings they're everywhere I've used it exclusively throughout the car uh, this is actually the push fit for the uh, Standard GM, so it fits on uh, all the standard stuff. Uh, fuel goes down to a uh, stainless uh, fuel lines. Uh, this is my uh, uh, fuel regulator on this car. Uh, the the truck rail had the fuel regulator on the rail. Um, you can see here that the uh, that the uh, that the shock towers are braced on both sides. Shock towers are braced. Uh, all of the all of the wiring is in um, is in uh, this uh, nylon sleeve, uh, so it's anti-abrasion, abrasion resistant. Uh, except for the back of the car. Let's walk around to the front of the car. This is the front of the car. Uh, excuse the prop rod. I uh, I have um, I have ordered new shocks, new hood shocks. Hood shocks just don't last very long. It doesn't matter where you buy them from. I I I've, I've, I've spent a fortune on them. There's eight of them laying over on the bench. None of them work. So I pulled them out. They were supposed to have been here today. Typical fashion. Today was the day I wanted them, so I don't get them today. Um, Let's see, so uh, these are monoblock adjustable. This is the, uh, this is the, uh, the cross brace. The air conditioner is here. Uh, note that I pulled out all of the factory, uh, uh, factory lines, um, but everything feeds directly in where it used to. Uh, so this one goes to the uh, to the vent on the passenger side, that goes to the vent on the driver's side. This one here goes to the uh, to the uh, um, 
the defrosters, and this one goes to the center vent. Remember, this is a 3.2 Carrera, so it has a center vent in the car. This, uh, this is actually attached to the uh, lever in the dash, and whenever you slide it one way, uh, it's off. When you slide it the other way, uh, air comes out the, um, the defroster. And if you want just defrost, then you just flip the three shut on the dash itself. And uh, voila, there you go. Um, it's a combination heater and air conditioning. So this is the uh, AC hose you can see here. And uh, this is the uh, heater hose. Heater hose also on a, uh, on a, on a slide. The, uh, the gas tank is here. Um, this is not the standard uh, gas tank that you get from uh, Renegade Hybrids. Theirs uses the uh, Porsche fuel pump. I wanted something a little more powerful, so I have the, uh, the uh, Aeromotive uh, Phantom 340 in here. Uh, we put it in the top, uh, so we had to relocate the, uh, the adapter for this. <clears throat> this, is the, uh, this is the radiator here. And I will uh, show you what's inside the radiator. We have the Snoopy tool. Snoopy tool pops these open. Hold on. This may not work quite as I had hoped. There we go. And we're up. Sorry. These aren't captive. Uh, okay, so uh, radiator and uh, condenser, uh, evaporator, sorry. Uh, let's see, uh, so these feed through here. This is the uh, bleed for the top of the radiator. You do have to bleed it in order to get all the air out of it. Um, this is all just aluminum, but uh, it looked kind of crappy in aluminum to me, so I uh, coated it with this uh, uh, fake 3M Dynock carbon fiber paper, shelf paper. <laughs> they probably wouldn't like it if I called it shelf paper, but you know, it sticks on stuff like shelf paper. So there you go. That's what it looks like. The, uh, I do have the cover for that. Um, I did not put it on for illustration purposes. The, uh, there is a Rin line cover for this. It's uh, covered off. So there's an inner aluminum piece and um, a gasket that prevents air from coming in. Also, I've used the Renlai block-off kit, so all of the, the air holes through the, uh, you know, what in a normal car would be a firewall, uh, or now don't allow air. Uh, that helps seal this, because um, now we have air coming in the front of the car into the, uh, into the, you know, into a place where a 911 would normally never have air coming in. So it comes in here, routes through the the uh, radiator and and down and out the bottom of the car like a normal, like a normal car. All right, Snoopy tool will come with the car. This is the uh, this is the interior. So that's the door panels. I've got to order one of those. Somehow it got lost. I will get that done ASAP. Uh, these are RSR door panels from, a, from a Applied Business Concepts. Uh, they're the regular 911 seats, not the super deep sport seats. Uh, the LS1 computer is behind the seat. Um, lots of the stuff is demonstrated online. The, uh, the battery is also behind the seat. Sorry, that's my, uh, that's my car show bag. Car show bag. The hell hole is not um, not covered with carpet it used to be and then I don't know it's just uh, sometimes okay uh, I don't have a I have to get that done that has to be done before I sell the car so that's the thing I need to get done at Nichols Mine. Uh, it has the original Blaupunk Monterey in it. How about that? Uh, a lot of these don't function, but the top one does. Where's this one? It's this one. This one does. This is the one for the the uh, defroster. 
uh, all the standard controls, everything works just like a normal 911. There's nothing unusual about it whatsoever. The only, um, so the, so the temperature gauge reads water temperature. Um, the sending unit on the Corvette is a little different than the sending unit on Porsche. So normal temperature on the car um, actually reads right at the very top of the gauge. But you get used to where that is, and then when you look at it, it'll look fine. Uh, the ultra gauge is going to come with the car. Um, I do not have it permanently wired in, but that's probably something that I think I'm going to... If, if I were gonna, if I were going to keep it, that's something I'd do, and I would move that down to a, a, a better location, you know, where it's not right on the dash. Uh, but that's a pretty valuable gauge. It gives you a lot of detail about the motor and everything that's going on. Uh, but this is a factory temperature gauge, a factory oil pressure gauge. It reads the factory oil pressure, and the, the oil pressure is correct. It actually matches this. You have to do the, the, the bar to PSI conversion, but uh, it does actually match. So uh, very similar there. The, the tack is completely unmodified. There's a, um, an adapter under the seat that uh, converts the signal. Uh, you know, the rest of the gauges are perfectly fine. The only one that had any modification at all is this one. And uh, you can see the font's slightly different, but it was done by Hollywood Speedometer. They're the guys, you know, there's no one better, right? Um, the gas tank is normal. This one is the one that's different. So you'll recognize that one is normally the uh, oil level gauge. It measures the level of oil in the, uh, in the, in the sump, uh, the dry sump sump. Um, pulled that out, replaced it with a voltmeter. Um, I got it from them. It doesn't work. So I, uh, I'm going to take all the pictures and do all the stuff for the show. Uh, not for the show, for the uh, auction. And then I'm going to pull it back out and ship it back to them and let them fix it. And then they can ship it back to me. Uh, it, it actually works, but only one gauge works at a time. I can either make the fuel tank work or I can make the voltage work. So they said, yeah, yeah, we know, we, we know what we did wrong. Just send it back and we'll fix it. So, you know, it's four bolts and really it's just kind of set in there. So, you know, nothing to it. Um, four wires, not four bolts. Uh, the headliner, the headliner is brand new. Uh, the lights all work. Uh, everything works just as advertised. Let's get a little dust on it. Um, you know, all this stuff is just, it's, you know, the, the car, other than the, the motor, the car is completely unmolested. Um, this is the, 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 the German uh, silver wire carpet set from Pelican Parts. Um, sorry, it's a little dirty. I took it for a drive today and I should, I should be a better detailer, but I'm not. <clears throat> so I just have to, have to, have to forgive me on that. Um, the, uh, the power windows work. The power sunroof works. The, uh, the windshield washers do not work. There's no tank. There's no motor. They're just set in there. I really shouldn't have even bothered. I should have... I should have welded those over and sanded them flat, but for some reason I didn't. Uh, so you have the option. Um, I, uh, I have all the original parts that came off of the car. Um, all that stuff will go with it. So uh, if, if you decide that you want to put all that stuff back in, it's, uh, all, every, it's all intact. It's all the brackets and everything under the, under the fender are still there. You know, there's... There's nothing to prevent that from, from working. Even the, uh, the little non-heated jug that goes right here, no, no problem at all. Uh, that jug will come with it. Um, the, uh, not all of the parts that, that came with the car will, will come with it. Uh, I, sold the, uh, I sold the motor. Uh, I sold the, uh, the oil... Uh, thermostat uh, and the uh, the uh, the oil cooler and then the lines on this car were already crushed so they weren't any good they would have had to be replaced anyway so I uh, cut those up and actually recycled them because they're brass and they were actually worth quite a bit recycled go figure 
so none of that. I do not have the original door panels. Uh, the door cards are RSR, and that's what they're going to be. Uh, that's a fairly common modification. People like to do that. I, I think they look a lot better than the original door cards. Um, outside of that, oh, uh, all of the back seat, the back seat is completely deleted. So there's no, no back seat what, whatsoever in there. Um, I don't think I have any of those components anymore. I think all that stuff got sold. Um, once again, another very common thing. Uh, lots of people do that. So if you want to put that stuff back in, it's certainly available. The, uh, it's funny though, the, uh, see the little bump right here, that's actually the, uh, the mount, uh, the mount for the seats. So everything is under there if you decide that you want to do that. Uh, but yeah, all the little bit parts and screws and things like that, all that stuff is in boxes and will come with the car. Um, what else is there to show you? Oh, uh, the back. I didn't, I didn't point out the prop rod back here. This one, this prop rod is going to be replaced with a, with a uh, regular prop rod. Uh, I, I bought one. It's going to come with it. I don't like the shocks on this. Uh, I, I, I don't want the, the back lid ever to, to pop up. This is only a single connection. I never felt like it grabbed very well. So um, it does have one, but I'm not going to double them up. I don't think that's a good idea. You can if you want. Uh, it comes with a second mirror. I have I have the left side mirror on the car. The uh, passenger side mirror will come with it. Um, I just never did it. Not sure why. Just never got around to it. Uh, and I kind of like the way it looks without it. Uh, Euro lights. Um, Euro corner markers. Uh, Euro corner markers in the back, the two color ones. You know, we like to put we like to put theirs on. They like to put ours on. So there you go. These are the BMW 2002 uh, uh, lights from Hella that everybody puts on these uh, on these bumpers. I think they look I think they look perfect, and it's exactly what's on the original cars. Um, as an 86, all the chrome was originally blacked out. Uh, that was a heck of a job. Stripping all that down, polishing it up. You should have seen these things. It was a nightmare. But uh, I think it came out really good. The, uh, th this, this molding, uh, these, are, these are new. You, can't, um, you can only buy them one color. They either come black or they come chrome. And uh, you use the one you use, and that's all there is. And they're... they're there, uh, so um, I had no choice but to buy some chrome ones. It wouldn't wouldn't polish up. It was too. It just didn't work out. Um, you can see I leave the key here, and it's both keys. It's uh, the key that runs the car and the uh, and the cutoff switch. And the way I have the cutoff switch wired, it's very easy to change it around. But I have it wired for storage, which means whenever I turn that off. There's no power anywhere. You can turn it off and let the car sit for hours, days, weeks, whatever, and it will run nothing down because there's no draw on the battery at all. Um, that means your clock doesn't work. That means if you were to plug in the stereo, this one's not plugged in. There's no speakers in the car or anything. Um, but if you were to plug that in and decide that you wanted to have music in the car for some reason, um, you know, you would lose your presets. You would need to wire that directly to the bed. Um, it will come with a charger. Uh, it's a NOCO Genius charger because it's a fancy battery. I don't know what it is. It's AGM glass, ad, advanced glass mat battery. Right there, Odyssey, Odyssey PC680. And uh, the uh, plug-in for it just sits right here. So, literally, I just slide it over here, pull my thing off the wall, plug it into that, and I'm, I'm done. The Carrera logo is under the clear coat. 
so you can actually polish the car. Yeah, ask me how I know that that was not a good idea to just stick it on top. Peels up all the little edges and points and stuff. You have to clear cut that 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 sticker. Maybe the the long Porsche one Porsche logo. I don't know. Maybe that's better. But this one had to be clear cut. Um, that's it. That's all we got. Now we're gonna start the car. So we take the uh, cutoff switch, put it in the thing, turn the car on. You can see it's got power now. That's the ultra gauge that's plugged into the OBD2 port on the uh, LS1. Uh, we do this. We've got uh, fuel, not much. The the voltmeter is currently not working. I gotta fix that. Uh, temperature gauge indicates life. Uh, no oil pressure. No oil pressure. Uh, motor's not running. Okay. There you go. Went off. Currently indicating about three and a half bars. Uh, if we watch this gauge, it'll come up in a second. It's really slow, so I'm going to edit some of this out. 